Hi guys, welcome back to 90s Obscurity. I have my beautiful friend, Jessica Dubin here today. So she actually recorded the episode on Bad Boys, which is our third most popular episode, oh. by the way. That's good. People well, like everyone the loves a the bad boy. They mm -hmm. do. And I think those are really good movies too. Um, so today, we just rewatched Fear for the first time as adults, I think. I think no, I, I have not watched that movie probably since the year it came out. Yeah. Or one year after, so, yeah. So we have some things to say, some recaps watching it as adults. Um, and we also rewatched Can't Hardly Wait. Another classic. I think we referenced it briefly in that Bad Boys episode. Yeah. For anyone tuning in for the first time, there's gonna be two different versions of this episode because we're doing video and audio. So video, you just get to watch us, but you don't get any songs. Um, the audio version is gonna be a radio show, so we're gonna talk about some of the songs that were in fear and can hardly wait on the soundtrack, and we're gonna play those for the audio version. Ooh, tough choice there. Looking mm. at our beautiful faces or listening to some great songs. Ooh, mm. I don't know. The videos tend to do better, but not by like that much though. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be a big difference and it kind of was at yeah. first and then the audio like catches up to oh, it okay. and so people start listening right. to it. So. Well, hey guys, go listen to the songs. Yeah. We're talking yeah. to the video right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wrote down some notes from when we watched Fear because there I feel like are a lot of things that we noticed that we probably wouldn't have. <clears throat> when we were younger because I feel like when you're young you don't like you don't pay attention to the logistics of movies for right? sure and also like just in general the first time you watch a movie you don't like if you rewatched it a week later you'd mm. see things that you didn't pick up on the first time so yeah. now like waiting 20 years <laughs> right wait is it Oh, it's like 96 it 96 came out. so that's uh 20, 25 years 20, yeah almost 20, 26, 26 years <laughs> Jeez. okay we're so old. <laughs> 26 years later we're re-watching this movie so not only are we going to pick up stuff that we wouldn't pick up because we were kids when we watched it but now we're adults and it's also the second time probably third time we've seen it yeah like ever so yeah um, i think i watched it a lot growing up i actually do you know what's really weird i so i i noticed this um a few years ago, it, it like dawned on me that I used to rewatch movies obsessively mm -hmm. when I was younger, like high school and down. Oh yeah, like I, Homeward Bound was one movie that I was absolutely obsessed with. I'm, oh. I'm the animal chick, remember? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, that movie I rewatched probably. I, I used to run home from school. <laughs> just so I could like put the VHS tape back on for that movie. Like, and I knew every line word for word and Free Willy was another one I was oh obsessed with. So I rewatched these movies and I'm like, I once I see a movie now, I very, very seldomly have yeah. a desire to rewatch it. Same with books, Yeah, I think. Like there, are, if I don't love a book enough to yeah. reread it, I'll just like resell it on Amazon. But I remember Cruel Intentions watching it all the time. Yeah. Like we were obsessed with Cruel but Intentions. But that's, that's just the thing. Like even now, there's no movies that have come out that we rewatch like in the last 20 years that I can remember, except maybe Step Brothers. I definitely <laughs> rewatched that movie. Not, not my lie. type of movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Step Brothers is so good. No, but there's very few movies that I'll like, like The Hangover, like any of those like, okay. like popular movies. Old school, yeah. I will not watch more than once. Oh. Like I just don't care to see it again. Like yeah, it's I done. I've, I've, I've lived that already. Let's like watch the next I one. I feel like I saw Scream in the theater like three times and Cruel Intentions. Like I feel like well, those were like. That's the 90s. We were yeah, younger. Like, yeah. That's, those are the big yeah. ones. Um, so the first thing that I remember today that you pointed out about fear was that they like walked into a bar at like seven in the morning before school. Oh yeah. <laughs> and she was like, why is there a bar and people are playing pool? And yeah. it's like seven. That was literally and... like the opening scene. They, um, um, what's her face? Um, Reese Witherspoon. No, no. Alyssa uh, Milano. Alyssa Milano. Alyssa Milano's character and the other guy, Gary, <laughs> his, oh, that's his oh, character, poor, poor Gary. But they're like, come on, let's ditch school. Like, let's just go real quick before English class or whatever. Like, what are you gonna remember? This experience at this bar or English lit or yeah. whatever. And it's literally like school, high school starts at like 7.15 a.m. Mm. Like what freaking bar? Is open and it's bumping and, and it's and, bumping and like Mark Wahlberg and all his friends are playing pool. Yeah, and, and you're like, are you guys so, up from the night before? Like, what's yeah. going on? Like, obviously that did not register at all when we were no. in high school. Like, not like, at and, all. and actually, <laughs> even when we rewatched it, I didn't notice it until you pointed yeah, it out, yeah. and I was like, oh yeah, it's mostly yeah. like first period. It's yeah. like seven a.m. Uh, but also, like another thing we noticed too was that 
Mark Wahlberg like whispers in the whole movie. Yeah. Like, well, I think it's to add up on the creepness factor. Maybe. Like it's pretty but creepy. It, but it's like to the point where I like we felt but like we, we did had have to, to turn it up. I was like, should we put the subtitles yeah. on? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like I literally. feel like we need to turn the volume up because yeah. you can't even like hear what he's saying. It's so off putting. Um, and I actually I just remembered something too when like a few minutes ago and I wrote it down. So. I guess I'll ask you your opinion on this, but it's when Mark Wahlberg and Reese Witherspoon, like they meet for the first time and he goes, you know, if something's too good to be true, it probably isn't. <laughs> and so we're like, isn't it supposed to be, it yeah. probably is. Yeah. So we're like, is that a mistake or did he mean it? Was that supposed to be some like cutesy, like, we should have like looked at Reddit for that one. I know. Well, cause my thought is, did the writers mess up or were they trying to make him seem stupid? Cause he's yeah, supposed to be like yeah. uneducated. I know. So yeah. I'm like, are they trying to make him seem dumb <laughs> or did they just like really mess up that line? I, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know it was, it was either way. It was sort of a miss and in, in, in general, like yeah. in the writing, like was it supposed to be funny, like tongue in cheek <laughs> or like, was he, were they really trying to make him look stupid? Like, I don't know. Nobody, we don't really know. Don't so know. that was really funny. But that like rave scene, <laughs> it's pretty funny. And she's just like, I, I think it was funny how, um, uh, Alyssa Milano like like sashays off to go like find yeah. the dude. She's and, like the worst she's, like, wing woman worst, ever. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna go like see this guy and and she's like, do you want to come <laughs> with or something? And she's like, no, I'm gonna stand over here. And it's like, what? And then at the end when like the cops are raiding it and she just goes, bye, see you later. <laughs> and, like takes off with like yeah. this disgusting guy. Gross guy. Ugh. I know, but I love that Alyssa Milano was like the token hoe in the '90s. Like, mm -hmm. cause like Melrose Place, did you ever watch Melrose Place? Only a few episodes, it wasn't like a... So she yeah. comes in at like the later season, she was one of the main characters, like sister, and she's the one that's like having the affair with the married guys, oh, and like yeah. just, mm -hmm. I'm like, she was like, they made her like she the 90s She was so cute girl. on Who's the Boss though, she was such a good girl, but after that she was But even that, they gave her a hickey, remember? Oh, like, that's right, yeah. That's where it all started, guys. Yeah. Samantha. It's Samantha. Yeah. Um, you know who else they made a, a token hoe? Um, Mar <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> they made um, Mar Marissa Tomei is a token hoe. They kind of like, look so similar. Many, they do. Mm. But she's like, like she absolutely slayed in My Cousin Vinny. And then after that, like she has sex in every movie and like just like. Well, remember her in uh, Crazy Stupid Love with yeah, Steve Carell? Just, yeah, literally. I mean, and she played that role. I actually, so Ooh, I went to see. That was so good. This is not a 90s reference. I'm sorry to like de derail for a sec, but I went to see a movie with my father at some point. And I, God, I wish I could. Maybe it was like the Capote, like Truman Capote movie. I think it might have been that movie. Okay. But either way, so I go to see this movie. It was sometime in the 2000s or 2010s. Um, I go to see this movie with my father because we used to go to the movies frequently together and the opening scene is Marissa Tomei, like no music, nothing, just like oh. clapping sex, like going after it, like with, it, on this dude. Was it Untamed Heart? I, I don't know, I think it was like Slater? a morning movie. I don't know, mm. whatever it was. I, maybe it wasn't that movie and I'm, whatever, but either way I was just, I'm like, my dad and I were sitting there like, oh my God. <laughs> Like, literally the worst, most awkward, uncomfortable moment yeah. of my adult life. I watched American Pie in the theaters with my dad as a teenager. Um, I watched it with my parents at home. But yeah. my brother told me to go. They, they, he's like, we have to watch this movie. I know. Both my parents were in the like room. Like, the, the opening scene where he's jerking off, and I was like, oh, no. And that was that was actually fine, but the worst was watch. I watched Don John with my dad. About, like, that movie. the guy, he, like, the whole thing is sex. He has a porn addiction, and I didn't know. And, like, I don't know. I should have just been like, do you want to watch something else? But I feel like, like, we did both just felt too awkward to say anything, so we just kept watching it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. Um, but Mark Wahlberg's... All right, so we got to talk about the roller coaster scene, guys. So it is, a, it is like, one of the main moments that I remember from the movie. It yes. was like very memorable. Like we were coming of age at the time when the movie came out. What was what year would the movie come out? Ninety six. Yeah. Coming yeah. of age. Like, it's like eighth grade. Yeah. Like we understand we understand those actions and probably some people are like like experimenting and it was very 
Risque. I'm pretty sure my friend lost her virginity to that scene. Um, <laughs> it was like we would watch stuff like that in like the movie Kids because it had sex in it. And so we would just like watch those movies over and over because it was like we didn't have access. Pushing the boundaries. Yeah, like we didn't yeah. have access to like porn. So it was like, ooh. You couldn't go exciting. into the X rated section of the video store. <laughs> When we rewatched the roller coaster scene, we're like, oh, Mark Wahlberg's face. I know, it's really creepy. It's so Ooh. creepy. Like, it's not a hot scene, guys, yeah. at all. Also, Reese Witherspoon looks like such a baby no. in the movie. Like, when we were kids, she looked older. So it was legitimate, like, I don't know. Yeah. But watching her now getting fingered on the roller coaster was <laughs> like, I feel like I'm watching child pornography. Yeah, you're Here's, like, this is, no. they're too young for this. Way too young. I know. Way too young. But I did want to point out, since you referenced Hickey's, um, mm. Samantha, Samantha's, Samantha. Samantha's Hickey, um, is that why you're wearing that bandana? No. Just oh. kidding. <laughs> She's like, no. Uh, no, I'm kidding. We, um, we're dressing 90s right now. I have a black choker. For those listening to the audio, I have a um, black choker on, uh, yep. you know. I'm, I'm traveling, so I can only work with so much in my suitcase. Fine. Um, I also have a pink scrunchie in my hair, so Cute. I'm going real 90s right yes. now. Oh, and these overalls, are, yeah. So, um, you get the whole shebang. I like to, I like to, I, I have my full closet. She's here at my house in, in the, uh, I'm drinking a 40 Valley. like I did in the 90s. I am drinking a white claw like <laughs> I do in the 2022s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the new Zima. Um, so, another thing that I wanted to point out about fear is how stoic that little boy was throughout oh, yeah. the whole thing. It's like he's on the spectrum a little bit, like, cause he doesn't have, like he just he has, had no emotional no emotion. reaction. Yeah. None whatsoever. It's like a little kid normally would be crying if they were kidnapped and locked in a house. Yeah, and like, and, like there were guns and like people. <laughs> their like, dog's, kid, their yeah. dog's head was cut off and he yeah. just like, Yes. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's a lot of spoilers in this show if you yeah. haven't seen Fear. But <laughs> if you're listening to this '90s podcast right. and you haven't seen Fear, like, what are you doing with your life? But it <laughs> but is. But, it is kind of. I don't want to say yeah. it's an obscure movie, but like, it's not a popular movie anymore. That's true. Like, I feel like people still watch Scream and Clueless, yeah. and like even Can't Hardly Wait. I yeah. think people still watch. But I think Fear is one of those movies that people kind of forget about. Yeah. 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 So yeah, slightly right. obscure. Yeah. It's not bad. Well, we hope we hope that you, if you haven't seen it, you'll go watch it and forget everything we said and rewatch it. Um, if yeah. I were you, it's great. Uh, but yeah, the little boy is very stoic and very strange. It's yeah. Very strange. Yeah. Um, and everyone's teeth was bad in the nineties. This yeah. is like another weird theory. I was like, because. Because you have like a high def TV, so I was yeah, noticing. You can see everyone. I don't, have, I don't have a very nice TV. But I was like, everyone's teeth, it was kind of bad in the yeah. 90s. They fixed them up a little bit. Yeah. Um, or maybe at least they airbrushed the videotapes in the, or later. I'm just now. like, did everyone get like veneers or Invisalign or something at current times? Because even when I watch like old episodes of 90210, I'm like, ooh, Shannon Doherty like didn't have very good teeth. No, but also like people's teeth change. Okay. Like your teeth at 20, like when, by the time you reach your 40s and mid 40s and even into your 50s, like they change significantly. Like, especially if you grind your teeth or okay. they all shift and change. So, a lot of people will in their 40s go and do those things they never did as a kid because, yeah. like, they're getting worse. Why did we think the movie was low budget? Do you remember? Um, because there was really, it only, the whole movie took place basically in the house and at the mm. carnival and like that one rave scene yeah like so like the whole climax of the movie is the end in that in their house like half the movie um, takes place there yeah, yeah and for and and also the movie's only like an hour and 36 minutes long or something around that number yeah which is like pretty short um you know most movies now are longer than that unless they're a kid's movie okay. kids movies are an hour and a half okay. like i've noticed hour and 40 minutes at the very most because you can't keep like a kid's attention span sure so that's why like a lot of these movies actually progress very quickly like this relationship with her and um and mark, mark yeah david i forget david right <laughs> um is nicole and david those are the main characters names yeah. reese is nicole and david is mark Wahlberg, but they like their romance progresses like very very quickly and then it become it goes out of control very quickly too sure. because they only they crammed it into an hour and a half yeah. movie so yeah, like yeah, yeah. everything progresses really quickly and just like can hardly wait is also 
um, low budget because it literally the entire movie takes yes. place in one, <laughs> like one house yeah. with like a, like a, probably maybe ten featured actors and then extras. Yeah. So um, that was a big thing. Like a lot of these, a lot of these movies in the '90s were low budget. Like these cult classic popular yeah. movies were very low budget. Well, think about home because Home Alone was actually a, uh, they didn't have a big budget for it. And that also took place in one house. In one house, yeah, yeah. like ninety percent of it. Yeah. But I watched the whole making of that movie, and when they were almost done filming, the studio shut it down because they needed like another two million, and they said no, and they shut it down. And then another studio picked it up at the same oh, time. Interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, and like. Thank God, because that movie's such a phenomenon. Yeah. And I'm like, thank God they finished it, because totally. it, it was such a great movie. I feel like my life has been changed because that movie exists. Yeah. So, yeah. Love Home Alone. Yeah. It's my it's favorite. It is one of the best. Yep. Always fun to watch at Christmas time. Yep. I know. My brother and I watch it every Christmas. Do you have anything else you want to say about fear? That movie definitely scarred me and left an impression about, like, stalker-type dudes. You know? like Maybe, we were maybe in a positive way. I mean, yes, probably there's, there was probably guys who have creeped me out because of him, but like, you know, when you talk about like nineties bad boys, I think I never thought about Mark Wahlberg as like a hot nineties bad boy because of like his role in this movie. Well, I was, and I like just found it so unsexy. I was surprised cause like so many women loved him in the nineties. I didn't, he was never my type. I don't know why. I just never like yeah. had the hots for him, but I thought you were gonna have thoughts for him, and you were like, no. Not at all. I was surprised. I liked, but I, was also, I liked Donnie Wahlberg. But I also was not a New Kids on the Block fan. Okay. Like, I remembered, like, so. But he wasn't in New Kids. Was Donnie, though? Donnie was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so, like, but that whole, like, era of. Well, see, I would do. I don't even know. I didn't even know that because I wasn't a fan. <laughs> but, like, that whole era of New Kids on the Block, like, I remember. You know, because my older brother. That was, like, the first boy band or whatever. And yeah. I remember my older brother made fun of them uh, and so you know okay. whatever my brother did I did and followed and you know so he made fun of it and I was like yeah I don't like the new kids on the bus they're well, stupid <laughs> and same with me because my older sister loved them oh so and so I looked like, up to her so we would we had the big pins oh, so and everything yeah. and we still go see them when they come to oh, town because we're from Boston too and so they always play Fenway every yeah. year and my sister's like do you want to go and I was like okay and we go, and now every year she's like, I'm like, again? Yeah. Again? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fun, but like, I think she enjoys it a lot more than me. Yeah. Well, luckily, by the time the 90s came around, I had finally um, thought, stopped thinking that my brother's word of and everything was gospel. Okay. And I liked NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. Yes. Yeah. My brother thought they were. Um, you know, losery also, and yeah. I was like, no, they're cool. I'm not gonna listen to you on this one, Michael. We <laughs> talked about them today, actually, because were you more Backstreet or more Insync? Like, insane. if you had to pick, insane. me too, me For too, sure. without a doubt. Like, I think more yeah. people are probably Backstreet Boys, but I loved Insync because they had like the fun, upbeat ones, but also like yeah. the ballads. I loved like the yeah. slow ballads. I liked the, ba I mean, the Backstreet's back song. Like, I liked Love that it. song. Yeah, but like. I also just didn't, I mean, they didn't, and I was also, when they came out, because they were first, yeah. before NSYNC, and I remember being like, oh no, another New Kids on the Block type band. So mm -hmm. at, at first I was like, ew, but then I started to like them, but then when NSYNC came around, I was like, oh, I was now on the boy band wagon, and yeah. I was like, yes to NSYNC, right. and like, Justin, I oh, know. I did like Lance Bass, and then I found out. We talked about Lance Bass in the last episode. Lance Bass. Lance like Bass Lance always Bass. comes up, guys. I like Lance Bass, too, because there was a boy I had a crush on. His name was Bobby Kennedy. Sorry, Bobby, if you're listening to this. <laughs> uh, he looked just like Lance Bass, and then Lance Bass was... I was like, so I like Lance Bass. Um, of course, I'm not Lance Bass's type, but we do have the same birthday. No, no. <laughs> but Justin won out after that. So, anyway. Can't hardly wait. Here we go. Don't have to wait anymore, because mm -hmm. we're here. We're here. We're talking about it. It's going to be so exciting. Um, I think it holds up. I definitely think it holds up. The, the movie? movie? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Have sure. you watched it recently? Yeah. We watched... No, I mean, like, oh, like before, before that? No, it. I don't think I had seen it in at least 15 years. Yeah, so. I hadn't seen it in a long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, it's good. But what's funny about it is that, like, that kind of high school party like really is nostalgic because like that's kind of what high school parties were like sure. for us i don't know what they're like today i obviously haven't been to a high school party in the 2000s um but like i mean it just you know everything the whole and the house the decor in the house like looked like all the houses we would party at in high school sure. like it's just i don't know and the outfits and everything yeah and the behaviors and mannerisms 
it was just very nostalgic. Yeah. So we want to talk about why Jennifer Love Hewitt is, well, this is my theory. I have a theory that Jennifer Love Hewitt is every, every generic white guy's childhood crush. <laughs> so this stemmed from my ex was like a blonde, blue eyed white guy from Utah. And I was like, who was your childhood crush? And he was like, Jennifer Love Hewitt. And then my friend's <laughs> husband was a blonde, blue eyed white guy from Seattle. And they did a trivia on her um, bridal shower and she had to guess his childhood crush. And she was like, I don't know. Like she got it wrong. Yeah. So they played him answering it. And he was like, Jennifer Love Hewitt. And I was, I looked at her and I was like, that's my boyfriend's childhood crush too. And she goes, she's Latin. And she goes, Rachel, she's every generic white guy's <laughs> childhood crush. <laughs> and my theory on this is because she had this little tiny body with these big natural boobs, right? So she's like every guy's dream body. But she also had like that air of like sadness yeah. and like mystery about her. Like, yeah. like I always think of the scene when she walks into this party and she's just like, and her hair's blowing in the wind. Yeah. You know, her, like, her hair's so perfect and she's just like. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. And she just looks. It's the pouty like damsel in distress yes. type. Like, and also couple that with. Like the girl like, she had like perfect shaped cat eyes, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like she had the hourglass figure, like the teeny tiny waist, yes. perfect natural boobs, curvy hips, yep. the pouty lips, air of the mystery. eyes, air of mystery, the long flowing hair. The girl like, next door vibe. Yeah, total girl next door But like door a vibe. little mystery. Yeah, totally. And like, but like a sad vibe, like a guy would think that he could go save her. Yes. Yeah. Like anybody with yeah. a savior complex, yeah. they're gonna love yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Or that just has like a boob fetish. Yes, my ex. Was a total, was a total and they guy. and they also like very much put her boobs on display in that they had her in the oh, white beater shirt, yes. walking around like with her. They were just right. out. So like <laughs> the little spaghetti strap yeah. tank top. Oh yes, yeah, spaghetti strap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, and then Jess just found online that it, in all these tabloids, she was busted carrying around the book, Why Men Love Bitches. <laughs> this is like 2011. She was carrying that book around. So, so I guess all the generic white guys got married and she's yeah. having a tough time dating now. Well, yeah, I mean, but I, I like, so I, cause I was, I actually typed into Google. I was like, why do men love Jennifer Love Hewitt? Like literally <laughs> that was my Google search term. Yeah. And they said I mean, there were nobody answered i couldn't find an answer and i was literally just skimming but yeah. i saw they said that you know i guess she was she was having a tough time get, like holding on to men like men would fall for her and like she had lots of dates but like she couldn't like keep a man i don't know what she's up to now so but, like i know but apparently the um the pouty uh the pouty thing is just it in the movie it only goes so it far. only goes so far yeah well I do have like a friend that reminds me of her and I have another friend that would say like the men love the mystery but then once they start dating her like the mystery's gone yeah. and she would get dumped so maybe like you have to keep up the mystery I don't know well it is there is an air of truth to that mm. like you know to fully know someone it there's there's a nice intimacy of that but also at the same time like you want to you want to feel like you, there's still more to be discovered because yes. otherwise you lose interest you're like I already know this I've already seen this movie I already read this book I know. You know so it's definitely like for long-term interest you definitely have to I mean and that's you don't like want to play a game about it but like you know well they do say in like dating books or seduction books uh, they do say to like try to keep the mystery alive you know when you're trying to get someone interested in you it's dumb well, yeah i mean don't like show all your cards immediately yeah. obviously which you shouldn't do anyway because people can use that against you but like you know <laughs> don't like terrible way of thinking but. no but it's true like you don't want to you don't want to just like word vomit your whole life story out in like the first two weeks you know like, yeah <laughs> probably, like we know people that have done that. right like literally so um yeah no that's not it's not sexy to to anyone at any point and it, yeah just i mean mm -hmm. you, and you shouldn't also it just makes you think like who if you've just told me your whole life story how many pe other people have you like just you want to the person wants to feel special yeah. like you save certain things yeah for, i like you know? to save it like as you get to know people mm -hmm. you know save a little bit more for each time because yeah. you know it, it keeps keeps them guessing and if you you hear like oh, you know people have been in relationships for a long time like I'm talking like decades mm. they'll say that I feel like I keep discovering my yeah. partner like yeah. there's always something new I'm learning about them I, you know I so hope, it's a, yeah 
I hope that's the case. I have hope for that. Yeah. I was going to mention that Ethan Embry was high throughout the whole film oh, yeah. of that movie. <laughs> so I read this in an article and like apparently he was totally high throughout the whole filming of this movie that he doesn't even remember like filming it. That's crazy. That's <laughs> I can't even get high and like go to the fridge. Yeah. No, I <laughs> I, I stopped smoking weed because of how dumb it made me. Right. So like, Imagine I like memorizing a whole script no, and like there's a crew no of chance. people. No, I literally stopped smoking pot because I would go like, it would have been like four days since I had smoked, but I would still like go study and <laughs> go to show up, go show up to my test and not remember anything I had learned. Like yeah. it, it hurt, it hurt my my short term memory brain cells very badly. So I just don't I know just how can't. people do anything no. when they yeah. smoke pot besides eat and sleep. Yeah. Like I literally will almost faint. Like if I get up, cause I get so lightheaded. Yeah. I fainted at a Fiona Apple concert like years ago. Cause I, and I took one hit of weed and all of a sudden I was like, Ooh, I feel really dizzy. And I woke up on the floor and I was like, okay, can't smoke pot in public anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, I used to do it when I was younger, but like I wasn't productive, you know, no. like people can smoke pot and like go to the gym. <laughs> My friend goes to the gym. Brain, I think their brains are just wired differently. Yeah. They, they have to be. Their There's bodies, no other way. Right. There's no other way. But crazy. Like I can't even think or function, but I thought that was really funny that this guy was high throughout the whole thing. Um, and, and you'd never know it watching it. True. You know? You know what else is really funny, just um, as a random sidebar? Um, how, like, do you, like, the 90s were, like, completely cluttered with teen movies. Yeah. Like, that was, like, the teen movie era. Yeah. Um, it was, like, a good time to be it was a teen. Literally, I mean, it was yeah. every, oh, sorry, <laughs> everything, everything, I mean, there were just so many. It was, like, one after the next. So, like, this movie come, came out in, like, 1998, and that's, like, the very tail end of the 90s. And yeah. And it's, like, actually a lot of people were, like, kind of lukewarm on this movie at, in the 90s because it was, like, the last of, like, a long run of teen movies. Okay. So there were a lot of people that were, like, eh, I don't know if I really like this movie. It's kind of, like, overdoing it, whatever. Um, I personally loved the movie when it came out, but... I have like a and newfound appreciation for it now, yeah. even still, because of the nostalgia factor and because it was like, I mean, back then it was like, you, you I don't know, there's some era of like, um, what's the word, like it's trying, like like popular, like mainstream, is like super mainstream, but like going back and listening to it now, like the songs, a lot of them weren't mainstream, so it wasn't no. even a really very mainstream movie even though it was depicting very mainstream America life. Yeah. So well I feel funny. like what, what they're doing now is they're re-filming all of our teen movies like The Craft. Like I don't yeah. know if you know this but they came out with a new craft last oh, year. Oh really? Yeah oh. called Legacy and I and it's like it's a new cast. Oh that's crazy. And then Faruza Balk makes an appearance at the very end and it turns out she's like one of the girls moms but it's like new teens and then like they just scream five this year. That's it's like they're just redoing all yeah. of our teen movies and like get your own. Yeah get your own and they do He's All That Yes. Did yes. <laughs> like, come on. Guys, think of new things. I know. And it's like they're, they are recycling the teen movies. It's like. Yeah. It's like there are a lot of writers out there. Like, yeah. you know. Give them a job. Give them a job to write something yeah. new. I'm a writer. Yeah. I'll option mm -hmm. my stuff yeah. for film. Make but it also, be new. But also, is it true that maybe like the kids in this generation like don't, like maybe because our generation is so far removed from like what kids are experiencing in high school now, like we wouldn't even know how to write a movie about TV, of like well, teens today. Well, what they've done, like they did a new 90210 spinoff, I remember, and it was like, oh God, because you have to think about social media right. and like bullying when it comes to like I mean, social media. Like it's so different, like what, I wouldn't know oh, the yeah. first thing about Some girl today. like sends a nude to a guy and he sends it to the whole class, yeah. you know, and it's like, oh God, that's what they go through nowadays. It's awful. I know. I'm so glad that we got our teenage years over before any of this stuff. Like, way. Same. This is going to be the best part of the show. Because I have a great story about meeting Peter Fascinelli, who plays Mike Dexter, if you guys <laughs> don't know that. Um, and we have to talk about this cast first, because, like, Jess and I were watching it, and I was like, oh my god, I was like, she's in it, he's in it. And they're almost like glorified extras. They have like one They line. are. They're like, yeah. So, Jason Siegel, Selma Blair... I was like, oh my God, like she's in it. She has like one line. I think Jason Siegel has like one yeah. line. And then you just pointed out Jerry O'Connell. Yeah. <laughs> remember he was- He also has like one and a half lines. Yeah. Remember he was in Joe's apartment on MTV? I don't, I don't he, think I ever saw He that had show, like, but... and then the Very Naked yeah. Lady song, like, welcome to the old apartment. That was yeah, like the oh. intro to the song. <laughs> yeah. It was a terrible show, I think. But I think that was the first time I ever saw him. Funny. 
Yeah, and um, I mean, Melissa Joan Hart obviously has a pretty big part. I feel like she always plays the same character. Yeah. Kind well, of. it's funny that we were both like, oh, it's Clarissa. Yeah. <laughs> She'll always be yeah. Clarissa. Clarissa explains it all in case you didn't, you um, didn't, uh, if you were not a 90s baby, there was, or if you, if you are, if you didn't remember that. I show. remember her brother was Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, Ferguson. <laughs> The dorky redheaded kid. You're like, oh, oh okay. he's like the token, like annoying younger brother, and um, Seth Green, obviously. Yeah, is... Seth Green was, and the fact that he, he acted black the whole, like with the baggy pants, and he was talking black. Like she's like, what are you doing? You're look in the mirror. You're white. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that was like a really big thing in the '90s, like kids, like white kids acting black. Like it was. There was a name. I'm not gonna say it, but oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, Forgot about that. Like, remember he, like had the, the big, he had the yeah. goggles. <laughs> She's like, take the goggles. They're like swim off. goggles. <laughs> he's like, some honey's gonna be sweating me. Some honey. The way, <laughs> the way he's talking. I got a honey downstairs, just waiting. Just for waiting. Some. Yeah. <laughs> and then I love. Did you ever see him in Entourage? When he's trying to get under E's skin, and he's like, tell Sloan I said what's up. He's like, he's like trying to hit on his girlfriend, and he's like. Did you look up with Seth Green? And she's like, no. Like, cause it's like driving yeah. him crazy. It's my, my main memory of Seth Green besides this movie is um, in Austin Powers when he plays Dr. Oh, Evil's kid. Oh, I actually forgot about that. Yeah. I think he was in a weird show called Birds of Paradise from the 90s that I think it lasted That's like funny. one season. <laughs> I think he was the son in it, I wanna say. I could be wrong. But yeah, there's like a handful of, I think this was probably like Selma Blair and Jason Siegel's like first appearance in yeah, anything. with a speaking role. Yeah. Like yeah. they literally had one line right. and we were like, oh my God, like there's all these random people that you're like, oh my God. And like Jamie Presley was in it too, which is yeah. so funny. She's like, I feel like she was everywhere in the 90s she and was. then, I don't know what happened to her. There's a lot of people from the 90s that were like everywhere. I know. Sort of faded off. I love Jamie Presley. She yeah. almost reminds me of like Margot Robbie, but like sluttier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they kind of like, like a similar yeah. look. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so before we wrap, guys, I have a great story about Peter Fascinelli. So my dad is obsessed with Twilight. Did I tell you this? <laughs> no. So my dad is like a hopeless romantic and he loves story. My, he's like a saver complex, I think, because he loves stories where like the guy saves the girl. Yeah. And he was obsessed with Twilight. So every Thanksgiving we would go visit him and my stepmom in Florida and like my siblings, we would, we would all go with my dad to see the new Twilight movies. Like this was a thing. So my stepmom would catch him in the middle of the night re-watching like the same scenes by himself. Oh my God. <laughs> like when Rob Pattinson like saves the girl. <laughs> And I pirated the sequel and like brought it to him as like a gift and he hid it from my stepmom because he's like, I don't want her to know that I have it. Like, like he was obsessed with Twilight. That's so funny. my dad has only visited me in LA once in the 12 years I've been here. And we go to the W Hotel, we're like going to the bar and I'm going to bring my drink upstairs to where the music is and the security comes up and they said, you can't bring your drink upstairs, you have to finish it. And this guy walks by me and he goes, ooh, naughty girl. And it's Peter Fascinelli. And I'm like, dad, dad. Because he plays the dad in Twilight. Oh, right, yeah. So I was like, dad, it's the guy from Twilight. And my dad's like, where, where? You know, and I'm like, like it's the guy that plays like Dr. Cullen, like Rob Pattinson's dad. So we go upstairs and my friend was like the promoter at the W and I see that he's like um, messaging Peter Fascinelli. And I'm like, I thought I saw him. And he goes, yeah, do you guys want to meet him? And I go, don't tell my dad this because he'll kill me. I was like, but my dad is obsessed with Twilight. He's really embarrassed about it. It's funny. But he's going to die. And now the whole entire world now knows. It's okay. He's my dad will never listen to this. <laughs> so Peter was there with his girlfriend. They're still together. And like, I'm telling you guys, like I've met a lot of celebrities in LA. He was the nicest celebrity I've ever met. So he comes over, he leaves his girlfriend at like the front row table. Mm -hmm. And he comes over and he's like, he was very flirty, I will say, oh too. Like he puts his arm around me. He's literally just like hanging out with me like this. Like my dad is over here like glowing, right? And he's like, hey, you guys wanna take a picture together? He takes my phone, he's like, oh no, we gotta get the right filter. He's like doing this. He takes this picture of us and it's like, my dad is on cloud nine. It's the cutest thing. But I was like, of all the celebrities for my dad to see in the one time he's visited me, it was the dude from Twilight. That's you know funny. what I mean? Like, what are the chances of that? Stars were aligning for your father. Yes, I know. So, funny. 
If anyone isn't following the Instagram for this podcast, it's 90s Obscurity, 90s Obscurity. I'm gonna post the picture of us with Peter Fascinelli because it's, I might crop my dad out actually because <laughs> he looks like a weird third wheel. He's like over here and like Peter and I look really close. But super nice guy. Um, it's actually a great photo, so I'm gonna post it. So check it out, guys. I just wanna say that I'm very disappointed that you're not gonna play a Smash Mouth song. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jess was like, I love Smash Mouth, and in my I head love, I was like, I can't do it. I love Smash Mouth <laughs> in the way that it's like very nostalgic for me because like they're very catchy songs, you know, mm -hmm. that um, just, I don't know, but like I used to listen to them in the car when I was, you know, in the 90s, yeah. you know, so they like bring back a lot of nostalgic memories for me and they're, you know, they're catchy and silly and fun yeah, and like yeah. whatever. Obviously they're not like a great band. They're, they're, not, not, like a, they're not obscure. They're not obscure. <laughs> um, they're not like popular either. They no. were just kind of like, what, I don't even know where to place them. They're, they're like, they're like, I, they're like I don't know why, but I put them in the category with like Blues Traveler, but yeah. I liked Blues Traveler more. But they're kind of also like Bare Naked Ladies, but yes, not quite yes. as like... Yeah. All the so, same scale. Yeah, it's like the same, yeah. but it's like ska, but not ska. Yeah. Like, it's not, like upbeat. Like, up, yeah. It's very upbeat. I yeah. don't know. It's upbeat, silly, fun. It's not hardcore rock. It's not obscure. It's yeah. just kind of like, yeah, it's like pop rock. I, I pride myself on this show on like playing only songs that like I pretty much love. Yeah. Or like, you know, that I want to like turn other people on to. And I'm like, yeah, she can't do it. I just don't love them enough to play them. Right. But. So, but when you're done with the show, feel free to go. Turn on Spotify and play Smash Mouth. Go put on the Can't Hardly Wait soundtrack yeah. and Smash Mouth will be on there, guys. Smash Mouth's on there. You can take that Somebody upon yourself. Somebody once told me the <laughs> way. Uh, wait, what's the... Um, yeah, no, not that one. It's the other one. The, their, their other one. The other, uh, can't get enough of you, baby. Oh, yeah. I can't get Remember enough that. of you, baby. Yeah, that one's on yes, there. Yes, it's true. Dun, 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 dun. Um, thank you, Jess, for coming on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, do you want to plug any of your social media stuff? If anyone has horses, Jess has a whole company. Yeah, I make, like, tail wraps for horses if you have not owned horses. <laughs> she's, she's really good at selling herself. Tailcinch.com. <laughs> you can buy some very pretty tail cinches that match. They're for horse tails. If anyone's horse people. Uh, if you want to match scrunchy in your hair with your if horse. If you think she's yeah. cute and you want to follow her, she's Jess Dubin with three S's. That's right. J-E-S-S-S. -S. Mm -hmm. Dubin's just like a snake. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 90s babe here. Yep. And um, if anyone wants to email me, you can email 90sobscurityradio at gmail if you have any songs or artists that you'd like to see on the show. Actually, if you live in Los Angeles and want to buy a house, I sell oh. real estate. Also, she's a realtor. Yes. <laughs> so you can look her up. And um, again, the Instagram for the show is 90s Obscurity. 90s Obscurity. Thank you, Jess, for coming on. Always a pleasure. And I'll see you guys next time.